controversy in Queens now, where police deployed a stun gun on a man holding his one-year-old son at a migrant shelter. A former resident at a Queens men's shelter says he was assaulted, and now the city is investigating the conditions. Former Governor Andrew Cuomo back again speaking at churches, this time here in the Bronx. We call the flood of asylum seekers to New York City the migrant crisis. Yes, it's costing taxpayers billions. They had to take that necessary action, and, um, you know, based on our review, those officers took appropriate action. Stun gun sparks controversy. All right, buckle up for a wild ride through what went down at the Queen's shelter. So picture this. NYPD officers roll off to a shelter for asylum seekers in Queens, responding to a call about a dispute involving a dad who supposedly had one too many. But here's where things get dicey. According to the dad, he's sober as a judge and just struggling to communicate because, you guessed it, language barrier. Now cue the drama. As tensions rise, the officers surround this migrant dad who's cradling his one-year-old baby like his life depends on it. Suddenly, amidst the chaos, you hear the crackle of a stun gun and screams fill the air. Controversy in Queens now, where police deployed a stun gun on a man holding his one-year-old son at a migrant shelter. Federal immigration authorities say two of the asylum seekers arrested for attacking New York City police officers recently. Police say they were responding to a dispute at the shelter, but the man at the center of the incident blames a language barrier. They are looking for places to sleep, looking for a future. They're looking for their dignity for themselves and their families. Yep, that's right. The NYPD allegedly deployed a stun gun on this guy while he's holding his precious little bundle of joy. But wait, there's more. The NYPD swears up and down that they had to use force because the dad was being violent and volatile. On the other hand, the dad's like, hold up, I wasn't even drunk and I was just trying to explain things. It's a classic case of he said, they said. Now imagine you're just minding your own business out of the shelter, maybe grabbing a snack from the communal kitchen, when all of a sudden, you witness this whole scene unfold right before your eyes. Talk about a jaw-dropping moment. And if that's not enough, someone's whipped out their phone and started recording, capturing every heart-pounding second of the altercation. So, what's the aftermath? Well, let me tell you, the public ain't too happy about it. People are outraged, slamming the NYPD for their use of force and raising serious questions about migrant rights. City officials are doing damage control, trying to calm the storm and assuring everyone they're looking into it. But tensions are running high and everyone's waiting anxiously to see how this whole mess will unfold. Stay tuned folks, this story is far from over. Migrant Family Confrontation all right, so let's dive into the showdown between the NYPD and the migrant family where truth is like a slippery eel which is hard to catch. First up, we've got the NYPD side of the story. According to initial reports, officers were called to the scene because of a ruckus involving an intoxicated dad. The situation apparently escalated, leading the officers to use force they deemed necessary. They're literally sticking to their guns, saying they have to take saying they had to take action to maintain order and keep everyone safe. But hold on to your hats, because here comes the migrant family swinging back. The dad's like, whoa, hold up, I wasn't even tipsy, let alone drunk. He's disputing the NYPD's claims of intoxication and doubling down on the fact that he was just trying to communicate, but the language barrier was throwing a wrench in the works. He's alleging mistreatment and saying the whole thing was blown way out of proportion. Now let's put our detective hats on and sift through the evidence. We've got cell phone footage capturing the chaos, eyewitnesses giving their two cents and conflicting accounts flying left and right. A former resident at a Queens men's shelter says he was assaulted and now the city is investigating the conditions. Now to the asylum seeker crisis as we get a first look inside a new shelter now open in Queens. A horrific attack and it was all caught on camera. Police ultimately put the surveillance video of that attack. Residents say they're being forced out of a hotel in Queens where they've been living to make room for migrants and they don't know where they're going to go. It's like a real game of Clue, trying to piece together the sequence of events and figure out who's telling the truth here. But here's the kicker. Regardless of who's right or wrong, this whole debacle is casting a shadow over police-community relationships. Trust is like a fragile house of cards, and incidents like this can knock it down faster than you could say cultural sensitivity. 
It's shining a spotlight on the need for law enforcement agencies to step up their game when it comes to understanding and respecting different cultures and languages. So what's the bottom line here? Well, it's clear that this ain't your run-of-the-mill spat between the cops and a civilian. It's a tangled web of conflicting accounts, deep-seated issues, and lessons that need to be learned if we're ever going to bridge the gap between law enforcement and the communities they serve. Let's just hope the showdown sparks some real change for the better. NYC Migrant Crisis Alright there folks, let's talk about Cuomo and his Bronx speech. You won't want to miss this out. So picture this. Former Governor Andrew Cuomo, the man of the hour, steps up to the mic at the Bronx Church and lets loose on the government's handling of the migrant crisis. He's pulling no punches, folks, laying bare the harsh realities and pointing fingers where they need to be pointed. First off, Cuomo's got some serious beef with how New York City's been left holding the bag when it comes to accommodating migrants. He's waving his arms, shouting from the rooftops about the lack of support from state and federal authorities. It's like he's saying, hey, we're all in this together, so why are we being left out in the cold? But hold on to your hands, because Cuomo's not just here to complain, he's got a plan. Former Governor Andrew Cuomo back again speaking at churches, this time here in the Bronx. This is a melange of government incompetence and deception and scams and really ugly politics. Fox 5 New York's Lizette Nunez live in Times Square this morning with the latest on the charges. Uh, the one thing we do know is you have 2,500 children scattered around the country. And now there's a fear looming that the men involved with that attack could avoid being brought to justice. He's tossing out ideas left and right, proposing solutions to tackle the challenges posed by the migrant influx. Whether it's calling for more funding or demanding better coordination between agencies, Cuomo's not afraid to get his hands dirty and dig into the nitty-gritty of the problem. But here's the million-dollar question. Are Cuomo's proposals actually feasible? Some folks are nodding along, saying, hey, this guy's onto something, whereas others are raising eyebrows, skeptical about whether Cuomo's ideas, skeptical about whether Cuomo's ideas can actually make a dent in the crisis. It's a mixed bag of reactions, folks, and the jury's still out on whether Cuomo's got the golden ticket to fix things up. And let's not forget the political fireworks that Cuomo's speech is setting off. It's like a spark in a powder keg, igniting debates and discussions about immigration policy in New York State. Folks are taking sides, pundits are pontificating, and the whole shebang is adding fuel to the fire of political discourse. So what's the bottom line? Cuomo's Bronx speech is like a shot heard around the world, shaking up the status quo and stirring the pot when it comes to the migrant crisis. Love him or hate him, you can't deny that Cuomo's not afraid to speak his mind and shake things up, and that's got everyone talking. $10 million daily. Get ready to crunch some numbers and dive into the wallet-draining world of migrant housing in NYC. So here's the deal. NYC taxpayers are shelling out a whopping $10 million every single day to cover the costs of housing and supporting migrants. That breaks down to about $387 per migrant household per day. Yowza! That's like buying a deluxe latte every morning, but instead, it's going towards providing shelter and food for folks in need. But fear not, because Mayor Eric Adams' administration is rolling up its sleeves and getting down to business. They're crunching numbers, analyzing spending trends, and trying to find ways to tighten the purse strings without sacrificing the well-being of migrants. It's like a high-stakes game of budget Tetris, folks, where every move counts. We call the flood of asylum seekers to New York City the migrant crisis. Yes, it's costing taxpayers billions. Well, that our series Migrants in America tonight, a closer look at the West African population that's arriving here in New York City. Six men have been charged in connection to that brutal attack caught on camera, and the NYPD is still looking for more suspects. I never saw myself in a position like this ever a day in my life, no. But here's the million-dollar question. What are the broader economic implications of all the spending? Well, let me tell you, it's a mixed bag. On one hand, allocating resources to address the migrant crisis is crucial for upholding humanitarian values and ensuring the safety and well-being of those in need. But on the other hand, it's like robbing Peter to pay Paul. There are competing priorities vying for a slice of the budget pie and tough decisions need to be made. And speaking of tough decisions, let's talk government spending and accountability. 
Some folks are raising eyebrows and saying, hold up, where's all this money going? There are calls for increased transparency and oversight to ensure the taxpayer funds are being managed responsibly and effectively. After all, when you're talking about millions of dollars a day, every penny counts. Spending, challenges, and solutions. Let's dive into the trenches of Mayor Eric Adams' battle plan to tackle the NYC migrant crisis head-on. First up, we've got the nitty-gritty details of Adams' initiatives. The man's been hustling folks, rolling out cost-saving measures left and right to stretch those taxpayer dollars as far as they can go. Whether it's tightening the belt on spending or streamlining services, Adams is leaving no stone unturned in his quest to make every penny count. But it ain't all smooth sailing, oh no siree. Managing the influx of migrants comes with its fair share of challenges. We're talking overcrowded shelters, strained resources, and logistical nightmares that keep Adams and his team up at night. They had to take that necessary action, and, um, you know, based on our review, those officers took appropriate action. A group of five men have been arrested, accused of attacking a group of New York City police officers. New York City is evicting 3,500 migrant families from the shelters where they are currently housed. They have found nearly dozens of migrants living in a small, cramped basement. Emergency services have now been called for this. It's like trying to find a square peg in a round hole, folks. No easy feat. But fear not, because Adams is not one to back down from a challenge. He's got a trick up his sleeve called the Immediate Response Card Initiative. This bad boy is aimed at providing financial assistance to migrants, all while taking some of the pressure off city services. It's like slaying two birds with one stone, folks, helping out those in need while also lightening the load on already overstretched resources. Now let's talk Turkey. Are these strategies actually working? Well, it's a mixed bag. Some say Adams is doing a bang-up job making the best of a tough situation and finding creative solutions to complex problems. Others, on the other hand, are shaking their heads, saying, we can do better. It's a heated debate, guys, and the jury's still out on whether Adams' initiatives are hitting the mark. That's all for today's video. See you next time, and bye for now.